Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, so trick question, question five from 2015, uh, paper two. So the question says, the diagram shows the triangles BCD and ABD with some measurements given. Find BC correct to do decimal places, okay? Which is this line here. Here. Okay, so find the length of BC, okay? And you might recognize the length of BC from coordinate geometry where it has the two lines down the bottom, okay? That is the math, math language for the length of, okay? So um, you will have come across him in coordinate geometry as such. Um, it's not coordinate geometry here because if we were to find the length of BC, we would need to know what the coordinates or the points were BC. So in other words, X comma Y for BC, and then we could do it using this formula. Okay, so it's not that. Um, and so the easiest chapters to mix up are the geometry chapters and I suppose trig, okay, because they're all about lines and angles. Okay, so we've ruled out that. So the next thing um, that you think about when you've got triangles and angles is, is trig. Okay, so trig then is a few pages, but it's mainly page 16 in the log tables. Okay, so the first thing you always ask yourself is we're in this triangle here, um, BC belongs to this triangle. Okay, so that really is the only one you care about for this question. So if I try and draw that, make it a bit heavier. Um, so we have a 42 degree angle. We have a 110 degree angle and we have a 16 meters here, okay? And I found it very helpful as part of my leave insert to just draw out the triangle in question from the big picture. Okay, because then I found it less intimidating when I was just looking at this triangle. Okay, so the first thing you ask yourself is whether that's a right angled triangle or a non right angled triangle. Okay, um, because that matters. If it's a right angled triangle, you can use sine, cos, and tan or Pythagoras' theorem. If it is not a right angled triangle, then you don't get to use any of those tools. Okay, if it's not a right angled, you have either the sine rule or the cosine rule. That is it to solve the triangle. Both of these give you the same answer. Okay, it comes down to a question of which one have you enough information to use. So it's not really which one is the right one to use because I'm saying to you the two of them gives you the same answer. But what you'll find in a particular question is they'll only give you, they've designed the question that they'll only give you enough information to use one of the rules. Okay, so how do you know? Well, you can do trial and error as in you can try them one after the other and see do they work. But the trick is for the cosine rule, you see the way it's all small letters? Small letters are asides. So if I have lots of information about the sides of a triangle, I tend to go for the cosine rule. Okay, so I'm back at my triangle here now. I don't really know loads of information about sides. I only have one side. Okay, so I have more angles than sides in this question. So that kind of implies that the cosine rule is I don't have enough information to use it which means that it's more likely now that I'm going to end up using the cosine rule, or sorry, the sine rule, because the sine rule is an equal split between sides and angles. The capital letters are angles, okay? So it's going to be a sine rule. And the sine rule works by linking the side with the angle across from it. Do you see that? A over sine A. So it's deliberately drawn and set up that the side across from its angle is the same letter. One is the small letter, one is the big letter, which implies that there is this built-in relationship in a triangle between the lengths of sides 
and the size of the angle across from it. Okay. And if you try and form a triangle with three pieces of, of, of rope or sticks or whatever, or grass or whatever you want, you will see that there is an inherent relationship between sizes of angles and lengths of sides. And try it. If you get access to three lengths of something, try forming triangles and you would see that angles and lines are, 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 are related. OK, so what does that mean then? Why do I use that for a question? OK, well, it means that I need to have everything in, I suppose, angle side um, pair. OK, just make him a little bit thicker. Maybe change the color. OK, so. Sixteen, the side 16 is opposite the 110 angle, the side 42 is opposite CB, okay? And whatever this angle down here, it would be opposite this side up the top DC, okay? So can you see that? I've set up my pairs, okay, for my sign rule, okay? And I tend to put in these arrows into my question because it helps me decide which side and which angle uh, go hand in hand, okay? So then I write it as um, 16, over sine 110 is equal to, okay, so that's that pair, okay, 16, the side over the sine of the angle across from it is equal to the side, and so let's call them BC, over the sine of the angle across from it. Okay, so again, hope that one makes sense. Okay, and then what do I do? Well, what I always do with the equals in the middle, I cross multiply because that gets rid of the fractions. So which means that 16 times sine 42 equals BC times sine 110. And you can see it doesn't matter what order I put them in. OK, why do I cross multiply? Well, I cross multiply because it gets rid of the fractions. Now everything's on the top. This is what I'm trying to solve for. So I'd like to get rid of this from both sides. So divide across by sine 110. OK, or of course, you could work out this on your calculator, sine 110. You could work out this on your calculator if you wanted. I'm just a little bit lazy and I'm going to do it all in one go. So that's why I didn't work it out. But if it makes more sense for you to work it out in between, then of course you do that. OK, so grab your calculator. Just double check. You have a little D on the top for degrees. OK, hit the fraction button and go 16 sine 42, close that bracket and come down on the bottom for sine 110, close that bracket. OK, and you'll get 11.393 for that. It's correct to two decimal places. So 11.39 metres. OK, match the unit to whatever unit is in the question. OK, so that is the length of BC correct to two decimal places. OK, so I hope that makes sense. That is the sign rule in action. OK, and it's a must, must, must know for the Leave Insert course. OK, um, comes up most years. OK, the next question says, find the area of the triangle BCD correct to two decimal places. OK, so. I'm just going to copy my triangle, move it on to the next page. OK, so we can see what it is. So what did we work him out to be? 11.39. OK. So find the area of the triangle BCD. OK, so still in the same triangle um, BCD. OK, so back I go to my log tables again and you can see I've written in extra formulas here to the area of a triangle. OK, why am I not using half the base by the perpendicular height? OK, 
for the triangle, well, I don't have a, a, a perpendicular height for a base. So in other words, if that's my base, OK, I would need some sort of a perpendicular height coming up here through it. OK, or if I used that as my base, um, that's not a right angle here, so it's not a perpendicular height. So I don't have a perpendicular height for a given base. This could, of course, be the base of my triangle because it doesn't matter which side is your base, but you need an angle that's going up or a line that's going up at 90 degrees from your base to give you a perpendicular height, OK? Because a perpendicular height is always 90 degrees up. And I don't have it here, so I can't use half the base by the perpendicular height. But thankfully, we have another formula for area of a triangle, and it's half AB sine C. Now, the only way you can go wrong in, in this one is not taking what's called the included angle. So if I'm to get the area of this triangle and I take the sides AB, OK? Do you see it's the sine C? And that's what we call the included angle. It's the angle between the two arms or the two sides that you're taking to calculate the area. Okay. And it has to be that included angle. OK, otherwise you're getting the area of a different triangle. Could I take this one is showing you AC? Could I take AC as my two sides? Yes, as long as you take the included angle B. Or, of course, you could take BC, which is up here, but you have to take its included angle, which is A. So don't get bogged down into which side is A, B and C. It doesn't matter. It's only a name. OK, you just have to be sure that you take two sides and the included angle. So again, if I look at this one, OK, can you see that I know I'm going to highlight the two sides that I have? I know what this side is and I know what this side is. OK, I do not know what the top is, so I can't take it as the side in my a triangle or in my area formula. So therefore, I ask you then, what's the included angle here? And it's the one down here. So you can see quite easily what they're examining in this question is, do you know that it's the included angle you have to use in the area of a triangle? OK, so how do we get this area? Well, we use the fact that um, angles in a triangle add up to 180. So we're going 110 degrees plus 42 degrees. Let me just bang that into the calculator. So 110 plus 42. I don't know why I'm doing that in the calculator because it's 152 degrees. And then 180 degrees minus that 152 degrees, 62, 72. So it's 28 degrees. OK, so we now know that angle down there is 28 degrees. OK. Right, so then we take area being equal to a half AB sine C. See, it doesn't matter which version of the formula I use because it doesn't matter what I call AB and C, OK? So I tend to always write it down as that and then take one side, take the other side, take the sine of the included angle. OK, bang that into the calculator. So a half by 16 by 11.39 by sine 28, okay? And I'm getting 42.778 meters squared. So again, correct to two decimal places, that eight's going to round up the other seven. So 42.78 meters squared is the area of that triangle. OK, so I hope that makes sense. It's a lovely, relatively easy question to find the area of a triangle. Uh, as long as you remember that tiny piece of theory. Two sides, use the included angle. OK, last question then says find AB, which is the one down here, down the bottom, correct to two decimal places. OK, so just like before, I am going to draw the triangle in question. OK, because again, um, I, I don't want to be intimidated by the big drawing. OK. So I have 10 meters over here and you can see I don't even put in the units on it. I literally just put in whatever I have in that triangle. OK, and this is a B down here and I'm going to call it X. OK, it's not a right angle triangle again. My choices are sine rule or cosine rule. OK, so do I have an equal split of angles and sides or do I have mainly sides? Let's go back and have a look. Well, I have no angles. OK, at the minute. 
So it's not going to be the sine rule. So this is lending itself towards the cosine rule because I have two sides and I have to find a third side. So to be able to use the cosine rule, then I need an angle, not any old angle. It has to be the angle across from the side that I put here. OK, so that's important. OK, and um, you've got to match the location of your angle with a side. OK, right. So come back to him. Let's see. Can we find some angles? Can I find this angle out here at A? Well, no, because I know nothing about it. Can I find this angle here at B in any way? Well, no, because although I know this part is 28, I don't know anything. I don't know that that adds up to 90. I've no parallel lines, so I've no corresponding angles. OK, so let's come up here. Can I find this angle up here? Well, yes, I can. OK, because you see my, as I call it, my protractor, I have a straight angle up the top and straight angles add up to 180 degrees. OK, so 63 degrees plus 42 degrees is equal to what's that 105 degrees and then I have 180 degrees minus that 105 degrees is equal to what's that 75 degrees. Okay so now I have figured out that that angle in the middle adds up to 75 because all three angles there have to add up to 180. So I added up those two took it away from 180 to give me the one in the middle. So now I have enough for my cosine rule. I have my sides and I have an angle. OK, so this X has to be across from the 75 degrees. OK, so the side across from the angle that you have in your question has to be the one that goes there. OK, because side A is opposite angle A. OK, so my my um, cosine rule a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a okay so my angle is 75 so x squared goes over there or you can say the length of a b if you want is equal to b squared and c squared so like like i said it doesn't matter what's a b c okay the only thing you have to be careful of is that this side is across from this angle the other two sides don't matter on their location minus 2 times 10 times 16 times cos 75 degrees. OK, so everything to the right of that equals to sign is just a number, which means I can bang it into the calculator all in one fell swoop. So 10 squared plus 16 squared uh, minus 2 times 10 times 16 times cos 75. And I am getting 273.1779, OK? It uh, feels quite high and definitely not in the ballpark of 10 and 16, OK? So that's your flag to you. Either you've made something wrong or there's another step to be made. And of course, there's another step to be made because this is x squared being equal to that. I want x, so therefore I have to get the square root of your answer. Uh, to get the length of that side. So I'm getting 16.528 or correct two decimal points. So you always look at the third one and that will round that two up to a three. OK, and it's a centimetres because it's a length of a line. So that is the length of that side AB. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our Level 7 in Electronic and Computer Engineering? This is a three-year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress on to the Level 8 in Electronics and Self-Driving Technologies and from there to the Masters. Check out the link below for more information.